Hello. Uh, hi, Liza. Look, I'm sorry to bother you so late. I just wanted to ask you a little favor. Oh, sure. Well, I'd be glad to help out. Just anything you want. Look, sweetheart, I'm, uh, I'm going up to New York for a week. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, I wish I could get away on a holiday. Look, I got a problem, though. I, you know, I got some pet rabbits, and uh, I, I need a home for them. Oh, uh, well, the only thing is, uh, how many of them are there? Well, there's only two. Oh, well, that's okay, then. Oh, thanks. That's absolutely terrific. Look, there's my tiny little problem, though. Um, I can't get their hutch out of my backyard. Uh, would you happen to have one? Well, let me think. Uh, well, we did have one. Yeah, I think we still got it, but, you know, it's pretty worn out and a bit dirty. Not too nice, you know. Well, I mean, I think that'll be all right. I, I'm sure it'll be fine, just as long as you clean it up. I mean, you will have to clean it up because, uh, uh, well, I didn't, didn't want to mention this earlier, perhaps, but uh, one of them's pregnant, you see. One of the rabbits pregnant, and she's going to be delivering uh, her litter uh, pretty soon. Oh, no. Well, I, I'm a little nervous about it now. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't know if I can cope with that. <laughs> Of course you can. Look, I mean, they're okay. She looks after her babies. She had eight last time. You'll love them. Eight? Well, that, that's just a little too many. I mean, oh, oh I, I don't think I could cope with that. I mean, and, and how do I tell when they're due? You know, when, when they're, they're going to be there? Uh, Very simple. You'll see the mother go off in the corner, and she'll collect up a lot of her old fur, and she'll start to make a little nest in the corner. And then when she does that, you'll know she's ready to have the babies. Well, what kind of food do I have to give them? Very simple, just bread and milk. Well, it, does it have to be hot? I mean, and why do you keep them? I mean, don't they cause you an awful lot of work and trouble? Oh, honey, they're so sweet. They're so beautiful. You're going to just love them when you see them. They're so nice. Uh, look, they also need a lot of fresh vegetables. Well, here's an idea. Why don't you bring what they need, then I'll just have it there. I won't have to worry about it. <laughs> well, I, I could do that, but look, the vegetables have to be very, very fresh. Well, how fresh do they have to be? I mean, carrots keep a long time, especially in the cellar. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll bring the sack of carrots then. That, that should be okay. A sack? How long did you say you were going to be away? Now, look, honey, don't start worrying too much. I mean, she may not produce these little bunnykins this week at all. Well, I sincerely hope not. I mean, I'm not used to this sort of thing, you know. You just sit tight. I'll come around in a couple of hours, and we'll get your huts all cleaned out and ready, okay? Okay, well, yeah, you, you can help me get it all ready and organized, because and, I'm a little nervous about it, you know. Okay. I'll see you later, sweetie. Bye-bye, then. Unit 19. Coping. Is that a photo of your children? Oh, yes, that's, that's Anna. Uh, she's trying to be an opera singer. Oh, really? My son's married. He's an engineer. That's Mike. And uh, Andrew's the youngest. He's 19. He's mentally handicapped. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I had no idea. Oh, no, please. That's quite all right. Uh, I, I don't mind talking about him a bit. Um, did you know right from the beginning when he was born? Well, he was very, very ill as a baby. Um... So we knew that something was seriously wrong, but we didn't know what it was at first. It's known most often as mongolism, but it's Down syndrome. Oh, yes. You can tell by looking at him, and that's really quite useful, because it means that people sort of have some understanding that there's mm. something wrong. They don't, mm. you know, they don't expect too much, and, well, obviously, his intelligence is very low. Um, mm. Speech is one of the biggest problems. Uh, he does have a lot of difficulty in communicating. Mm. That must be very frustrating for him. Oh, I think it's probably about the most frustrating thing, you know, he's got. Mm. Mm. Most things, he copes very well socially, for example. Uh, we can take him anywhere, really. Mm. What does he enjoy doing? Oh, well, he can do quite a lot of things. He helps in the house a certain amount. Mm -hmm. He uh, he works in the garden. Uh, he really, he, he likes to help people. And, uh, mm. you know, and he loves to oh, play snooker, for example. Actually, he can ride. He can ride a horse. Um, oh, he, really? Uh, he swims really quite well. Um, and how, how well can he look after himself? Oh, well, not at all, really. He's never going to be able to be independent. Um, when I say not at all, I mean he, he'll put two pairs of socks on instead of one and, and he'll forget to put a coat on in winter, things like that. But on the other hand, he, you know, he can wash and dress and things like that in a reasonable sort of way. And can he get about on his own? Can he? Oh, well, uh, 
that does have a bit of, a few problems. You see, I mean, he wouldn't be able to ask his way if he got lost. Mm. Um, he, he might get on a bus and nobody'd quite know where he was no, going. Oh, he doesn't understand money either. Um, I suppose our biggest worry is the fact that uh, you know he might meet up with a group of yobbos who'd mm. be be vicious or unkind yes. to him. Uh, actually. That did happen once, and it's uh, you know it's very difficult to forget about it. Uh, how, how do you feel about his future? Well, one never really stops having anxieties, but that's not the all. That's not all there is to it. Mm. He he has a, a, a sort of a sort of gift for happiness, and he he continually learns new skills, which is is very exciting for him, and it's it's really lovely for us too. Um, well, I do hope I could meet him one day. Well, everybody's much more understanding about things nowadays, mm. and people do find him nice. We're mm. not the only ones who do. Mm. Unit 20. And later today. Studio production was by Brendan Donovan, and the editors were Francis Barnes and Derek Newton. And before the nine o'clock news, a quick look at some of this morning's highlights. At five past nine, there's Science Tomorrow with Jean Hook. And that's followed by The World Around Us, when we learn all about Antipodean curiosities, how the platypus won his spurs, and why baby kangaroos are called joeys. That's Babies of the Bush at 9.30. After a Tale at 10, the first in a new series of theatrical profiles, under the title Waiting in the Wings. And this morning, Ray Keeling talks to the grand old theatrical dame, Kitty Spurge. The play in which you made your name was Shaw's Heartbreak House, wasn't it? Yes, it was touring here at the time. Mm -hmm. I was only taken on as an understudy, of course. But I just spent three months in a musical version of The Seagull, so even and then... And then I... fate took a hand, and you took over the lead when the great Nellie Perry broke her leg. Fate? I pushed her! For more of Dame Kitty's colourful reminiscences, tune in at 10.15 for Waiting in the Wings. Later, at two minutes past eleven, an examination of socialist agricultural policies worldwide, when the Spectrum team presents Let Them Eat Cake. Finally, at 11.45, today's concert, when the Bogner Philharmonic, under the baton of Wanda van Eck, will be bringing us Elgar's sea songs, sung by Evadne Butcher. Unit 21. Fairground Dream. <laughs> Oh
Unit 22. What's on? Do you want another drink, Leslie? Uh, no, thanks. I'll finish this. I'll tell you what, we've got to decide what we're going to do tomorrow. Well, what time do you want to meet? Oh, not too early. Le le um, let's meet in the morning, about 11. Yeah, OK, then. What about that exhibition, Colin Baxter? Oh, yeah, I, I read about that. What, the photo? Yeah, that's right, landscape photos. That should be good. OK, I'll see you there at 11. Look, okay, what, what, what else are we going to do? Oh, do you know what? I met those people. I met some of the cast in um, New Zone West. They could get us in for oh, free yeah. if you want to go, go to that. Free? Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, let's go to that. OK, then we'll do that. Then what? Oh, look, look, I'll take you to the assembly rooms. You haven't been, have you? Yeah, we could go there for lunch. Yeah, they've got a really nice bar with, with food and Oh, yes, thing. and there's the mime thing on at the assembly rooms after that. Oh, no, not mime. Oh, go on. No, I, I really don't like mime. Oh, I don't want to go. Ben, I really wanted to go to no, that. No, come to this South African thing. It's, called, it's called The Hungry Earth. But, I read about it yesterday. it's David Glass's last performance. No, I, look, anyway, you said you wanted to go to The Tempest. That starts at 3.35. Yeah. And David Glass doesn't finish until 3.35, so you can't go to both. Oh, all right. OK, so The Hungry Earth, then. Yeah. What's that? Oh, I don't know, it's been really well reviewed. Mm, political South propaganda, Africa. huh? No, not at all, not at all. Okay. Anyway, so, so, that, so after that, it's the Shakespeare. OK, the I tempest. think we're going to need some light relief after that, actually. What's How about accidental death of an anarchist? Well, tell you what, before we, before we go out in the evening, I've got to go and meet some people at the circuit and have, have some stuff. Oh, OK, then I'll go back and visit my relatives. Oh, right. Better fit that in sometime, I suppose. But I've seen accidental death on the telly. Oh, go on, it's supposed to be really funny and we're going to need some light relief after the tempest. No, there's this dance performance on. Oh, Ben, you, you've told me accidental death's good. You're always telling me to go and no, see I it. No, I know, you must go and see it. Oh, no, I'll go okay, to the dance okay, and you we'll go for that. OK, then, and then where do you want to meet? After that. Uh, let's go to the review. You know, oh, that's news supposed review. to be satirical, isn't it? Well, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, OK, then we'll do that. And then right. what? Oh, no, what we must go to is Urgent Theatre. Oh, just because you've got friends <laughs> in the car. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. But it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. OK, then, <laughs> so all right, told. we'll go to that. Oh, and you know what? Tom Robinson's playing as well. Oh, look, look, we've got, we're going to about nine things that's already true. tomorrow, Lizzie. That's going to be, be so really broke. expensive, isn't it? It's hopeless. Good grief. Oh, do you know what? I've been invited to a party. We could go to that instead, if you want. Oh, yeah, who's that? It's Dave Scott. Oh, what, Dave Scott we met the other yeah, day? Yeah, oh, right, the Dave yeah. Scott. Yeah. OK, we'll do that then. Save a bit of money, I suppose. Right then. Unit 23. A Hollywood Story. A friend of mine who came from Australia uh, went to Hollywood. And in fact, he'd only been there a few weeks when he got a call from his agent. And his agent said, Brucey, baby, great news, fella. They want you on the set of Pillow Talk tomorrow morning. Now, Pillow Talk, as you may or may not remember, was a, was a film with Rock Hudson and Doris Day, which was made in the 60s. Rock Hudson was a very big star then, so was Doris Day. The thing was, the studios were going broke at that time, and to try to get extra sources of money, what they started doing was having coach tours of the studios. They'd bring in lots of tourists who would go through the studio sets, and what they really wanted, the highlight of this tour, was always going to be to find and spot a star. Uh, so they were allowed to go into areas where the actors actually took their recreation, the, their leisure in the canteen and, and the uh, rest areas, things like that. What the tourists didn't know was that the moment they approached, there was always a lookout who would say, They're coming, everybody! Make for cover! They're all coming! And all the actors, all the stars would go away quickly so the tourists didn't see anybody. My friend, being new to the situation, didn't know what he was supposed to do or what to expect. And he was sitting in the canteen quietly having his lunch on his first day when somebody burst in through the doors and said, they're coming, everybody out, get out, everybody out. And as everybody went, he sat there in a confused state with a couple of other people who were wearing overalls and had paint on them, were obviously working on the set, and he didn't quite know what to do. In came this whole load of people with sunglasses and rhinestones on them and blue rinsed hair looking panically around for somebody to corner. And one lady rushed up to him and said, Excuse me, excuse me, but are you anybody? Published by Oxford University Press. Copyright Oxford University Press, 1986.